Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this series, we're revisiting the ISS to Station 5 um, transfer. And the big challenge in this mission is just how far out of plane Station 5 is with the ISS. It's 66.31 degrees out of plane. And we flew this one time before doing uh, Plan 3, I think it was. And this time we're going to try Plan 5. And Plan 5 is the one where we're going to lower our altitude down into the atmosphere, just the upper part of the atmosphere. And we're going to use the dynamic pressure that we get from that part of the atmosphere to steer our vessel along so that we can get some plane alignment for really, really cheap. So let's go ahead and jump back into the flight. Okay, so in the previous video, I was trying to get my vessel configured so that I can hold a 15 degree angle of attack when we get down to the atmosphere because that is uh, verifiably the best angle of attack that you can have. If you're a little bit lower, then your rate won't be as good. And if you're a little bit higher, your rate, your rate won't be as good. And we'll, and we'll demonstrate that. But uh, let's, let me look at this view. So we're currently at 300 kilometers. So let's go ahead and warp time forward. Let me actually come back to real time just for a moment because I don't want the vessel to rotate a bunch. So let me kill rotate and put in just a bit of yaw in that direction. Okay. I'm going to warp time forward. Uh, okay, okay. I, for a second there, I thought I blew it, but uh, I think we're okay. I really wanted to come out of time warp sooner than that. But let's... Uh, but we're high we're still high enough that it's okay but boy that time warp got away from me now we don't have to worry about bringing in the radiator uh our the back this part of the vessel is never going to get hot enough to worry about that but as you can see our rate is currently 0 0.003 and let me let me actually switch over to this view and let me bring up surface on this side so so here we can see that our angle of attack is 14 degrees and our altitude's 85. When we get down to where you know our dynamic pressure is really starting to have a, an effect on our rate, I, I will I want to show how how the angle of attack can change your rate uh, for for better or worse, and how having it at 15 degrees is verifiably the, is is the best. Okay, sorry, I'm, I was thrown off by that time warp. I was like, wait, what? Um, but we're fine. If, if, it, if we had gotten down to, you know, 70 kilometers or something, I would have had to have redone this part, but I think we're okay. So our vertical speed is negative 55, and we are, and we're getting lower and lower. And, and this feels right to me. So as we are approaching the ascending node, you know, I feel like about that much on this side and about that much on that side is what we want. If we were hitting 85 kilometers here, that would be a problem because we would be, we would be way, we would be just way too soon. Or, or likewise, if we didn't get down, you know, if we were passing the ascending node at 120 kilometers and then we were going down, down, and we were only, you know, getting to 80 kilometers at this point, that'd be a huge problem. You really need, in order for this to make any sense, you really need to, uh, make sure that you know you're getting down into the atmosphere just a few degrees before the ascending node. But you can see as we get lower, our rate continues to decrease, uh, which is what we want. We want a, a rate that's you know going more negative so that we're bringing down our relative inclination even faster. I do want to really watch my vertical speed. I don't want to let it get you know like negative 300 or something like that because I don't really want to go any lower than 75 kilometers. You know, again, if I hit 74, it's fine. You know, 73 is fine, but I don't, I don't want to go too low because then, then I'm getting so much drag that even though my rate would be better, um, you, you hit a point, and I don't know exactly where that point's at, but you hit a point where you're getting so much drag that the amount of fuel that you're going to spend to raise your orbit back out is perhaps... Uh, equal to or greater than the amount of fuel that you would have spent just to align your plane in the first place. But again, plane change is expensive, crazy, crazy expensive. So despite the fact that, you know, we'll be spending 
hundreds of Delta V to do these maneuvers, it's still way cheaper than the 8,000 Delta V that it would cost to do the plane alignment directly. So we're about 77 kilometers, and let me just go ahead and start rolling out just a little bit, just to bring that vertical speed closer to zero, so that so that I don't go too much lower than my target of 75. And again, if I if I am a bit higher than 75, it's fine. If I'm a bit lower, it's fine. I just don't want to be way way off. And I got pretty lucky on my angle of attack. Um, well, not completely lucky, because again, I have done this thing before, so I know experimentally about what to do. But, um, you know, full up elevator and a little bit of center of gravity shift uh, it, it gives you what you need to hold on to that 15. So now that we're really close to 75 kilometers, I want to prove that that uh, this 15 degree AOA is, is what we want. <clears throat> So you can see right now my rate is zero point is negative zero point zero two two. It might actually get into two three, two four, two five as we as we get a little bit lower here, but right now it's two two. So watch what happens. I'm gonna pitch the vessel down a little bit so that my angle of attack is more shallow, so I'm like closer to ten degrees. So currently we're at uh, zero two three. So I'm gonna pitch the vessel down, and you can see immediately the rate is not as good as it was. Now I'm going to let the vessel go back up to 15 and settle. So I'm going to kill rotate there just to let it settle because we are in the atmosphere so it will bobble a little bit. Getting really close to 75 kilometers, so I'm going to start rolling out a little bit more so I don't go too much lower than 75 kilometers. There's nothing magical about that number. We're not going to burn up if we are suddenly, uh, you know, at 74. So... Now you can see my rate is 0. Point, uh, uh, let's just say 0. 0.025. Now just really quick, I I'm, I'm, need to do this quick because there's something else I need to do soon. But let me just let this vessel settle. So we're at 15. Just give me one more moment to let this vessel settle a little bit more. So we're at 15, 0. 0.025. Watch what happens when I pitch up. You can see it immediately starts going worse. So there I feel like that proves uh, pretty well that 15 degrees is what you want. Now I want to switch over to orbit MFD projection distance. I want to make sure that the other side of my orbit doesn't get too low. So now I'm going to start putting in a little bit of thrust and you'll notice that that actually helps my rate as I'm thrusting here. And I'm going to switch over to this view because I want to be able to see my, my altitude and my, my vertical speed. But I'm going to continue to thrust with just a little bit of main engine. Notice I'm not using the full power of the main engine. I'm not using half power, just a few clicks of main engine, just to make sure that my, my PEA, my APA don't get too bad. And so this was our first pass. We passed the ascending node. So here in a couple more degrees, we'll start rolling more and more out to make sure that um, you know, to make sure that we can climb back out. So uh, we have a positive vertical speed, so that's good. And we're near our target altitude of 75 kilometers and we're going up. And so far we've cut off, cut off about four degrees. We'll probably get uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 degrees on this pass. And again, we have a little bit of main engine just to make sure that our orbit doesn't get, uh, you know, completely wrecked. And we are at a negative 0 0.026 on our rate, 59 degrees on our relative inclination. And ideally, what I want to have happen is I want to have uh, that part of my orbit, so basically straight across from where I am right now, I want to make sure that that is my apoapsis. It's, I want to be as close to that point as I can to make sure that that's going to be my apoapsis. And I'll probably shoot for around 250 or something like that. Because if you if you bring up that part of your orbit, and you might think, well, I'm going to be back down at 75, so I just want to make sure I'm up high enough that I'm not getting any effect from the atmosphere. So I'm just going to go for like 130 or 140. The problem is, it, as you come back around, you're going to hit the 85 kilometer mark like at that point. And, and you're so far off the ascending node that you're getting a tremendous amount of drag. And um, 
and it's, you're not really getting much plane alignment. So even though we're coming back down to 75 kilometers, I want to make sure that the other side of my orbit is about 250 so that the angle works out. In fact, I might even go for like 275 or 300 because I just want to make sure the angle works out so that as I'm falling down from that point, I don't hit the uh, 80 kilometer, 90 kilometer so far ahead of the node. All right, so you can see our apoapsis is coming up and it's you know sliding its way around. So we're several degrees past the ascending node now, uh, rates coming down. So maybe I'll start rolling out a little bit. Go ahead and kill the rotation there. But I'm, and I'm going to leave my, my elevator trim locked at this point. There's no need to change it because I've, I've found that sweet spot. I found that 15 degrees. So I don't want to, you know, come up and turn off my elevator trim, recenter my center of gravity because I'm going to have to, uh, I'll have to continually find that 15 degree spot. And sometimes that can be a bit tricky. Um, and I suppose the loadout of the vessel is going to always be a bit different from flight to flight. So that number that you saw for me of negative 0 0.0397, that might not always be perfect from one flight to the next. Okay, so we're about 2.15. Rates uh, getting closer and closer to zero, so we're getting less and less impact from the atmosphere as we're climbing out. It's exactly what we would expect to have happen. So I'm going to start rolling out a bit more now. We're about 2.50 on the APA. Let me go ahead and kill the main engine for now. And as we're climbing out, you know, we're, we're still getting a bit of drag, so we'll probably put in a little bit more main engine here in a moment. But for now, uh, I just want to make, I just want to get things settled. So our rate is almost down to zero. And we're, you know, pretty far past the node at this point, so I wouldn't expect to get much benefit. Plus the fact that we're almost up to 90 kilometers. APA is about 266. And yeah, that's that's a good number. I'm not gonna worry about uh, worry about messing with that too much from where it's at. So one thing I do want to keep track of though is again the descending node is right there, and and I want my apoapsis to essentially be at that point or very close to it. If it's not perfect, it's fine. So. To me, it looks like my apoapsis is a bit sooner than that. It's a little hard for me to transfer that to that, but just eyeballing it, I would say that you know my apoapsis is occurring probably more like here. We can probably make that work, but as we go through these passes, we really want to make sure as, as, as well as we can that we keep our apoapsis on the, the node opposite of the one that we're going to be using for our atmospheric uh, maneuvering. All right, rate's almost down to zero. We're up pretty high now, so we're not going to get much else happening from this pass. Apoapsis has remained above 250, so you know we're getting a bit of drag, but uh, not too much. All right, so now I'm going. I'm just going to go ahead and warp time forward at 10. Just climb up and out. Okay, so I'm just a little curious one thing here, so I'm going to reach apoapsis. I just kind of want to see where it compares. So yeah, this is a quite a bit before the node, so let me think about that. Let me switch over to orbit HUD. So I think what we can do let me go into the prograde position. Uh, we're pretty close. Let me go ahead and um, just manually work my way over there. I think what we can maybe do like as we get right, matter of fact, let me go ahead and use the autopilot even though it's going to roll my vessel over and that's not what I want. But um, actually, 
turn that off and speed it up. What I, what I have in mind is I kind of want to see if I can push the apoapsis a bit further ahead of ourselves from where we're at right now. And I think I might be able to do that. So let me go turn off that prograde autopilot, kill my rotate. And if I, if I yaw out a little bit, I believe it will push my apoapsis forward. And let me kill my main engine there. So yeah, and what I really want to have happen is I really want the apoapsis to be as close to that point as possible. So let me go, let me go pretty much all the way to outward. Most of the way to outward. And we'll take a look at our fuel here in a moment, because I can imagine if you've never done this maneuver before, you might be thinking, oh my god, you're using so much fuel. It's really not that bad. Okay, yeah, so that's... Translation. Rotation. So that's pushing my... So that's pushing my, my apoapsis bubble closer to where I want, so I'm going to continue this burn for a moment. That way I can ensure that my um you know my periapsis is back here which is you know what we need so every few seconds i'm gonna have to kill the burn because i can't quite eyeball but i think we probably need to have our apoapsis bubble probably all the way over here let me rotate just a little bit because i can see i am bringing down my periapsis and that's not what i want bear with me and then we'll uh, we'll get this we'll get this sorted out and then we'll end this video and move on to the next part okay so we're almost there now that's saying that so actually I guess what I really want is the node so I can continue this maneuver until the, the time to the until my time to apoapsis is four is basically matches that number so let me try that so my periapsis is going up slightly, that's fine. Because we want to be closer to 75 anyway. So 420, 320. Apoapsis, periapsis going up slightly, so 415, 363. Okay, so those numbers are almost matched. Let me go ahead and turn off the main engine for just a moment warp time four just to make sure that because i feel like that's closer than that <laughs> okay i think it's really close i think it's really close so we're coming up to uh to 20 minutes on this part of the video so let me go ahead and uh let me go ahead and actually pause and i'll do everything i was going to do but i'll wait till the next video i, I what i want to do is i want to uh, check my fuel usage <clears throat> before I actually complete the next uh, burn at Apoapsis. That way I can see, you know, my complete pass one. I, I want to see what it cost. So let me switch camera views here. If you enjoy, if you enjoy this stuff, and I hope you do, I, why else would you be watching? <laughs> Go ahead and leave a like down below. Leave a comment. Uh, let me know what you think about all this. Does, does, this, does this make sense? Is this confusing? Uh, leave your comments, leave your thoughts, and I will see you in the next part.